So in this problem, we're confronted with a structure with a series of different forces acting on it. We know that the maximum allowed stresses in them are. We want to find the allowable diameters of each member. So when confronted with a problem like this, the first thing you want to do is know that this thing is in equilibrium. So that means the sum of the forces in the y direction have to be equal to zero. We know we have a support here. So there is a reaction force acting on this structure. We're going to assume is in the y direction. We can impose that the sum of the forces in the y direction have to be equal to zero. And the sum of the forces in the y direction that's going to be equal to the reaction force at A minus 40 minus 30. And because this is equilibrium, it's got to equal to zero. So I can bring this sum to the right, left hand side and find that reaction at A is just 70 kilonewtons of force. So now once that's done, we count how many forces we have. I see one, two, three forces. So I'm going to make two cuts. You always make one less cut than the amount of forces that you have. And with each cut that I make, I'm going to include a new force. So my first cut is gonna have one, just this one. My next one is going to include the next force. And you would continue doing that, but in this problem, we only have three forces, so we need two cuts. After making those two cuts, we're going to draw a free body of each section. So I'm going to draw a free body of this thing here, this little section, of each section included in the cuts. And then I'm going to draw a free body of everything up into the next cut so that I'm going to draw one like that does that. So let's draw the first one. The first one is relatively straightforward. It's just the top part which has reaction A, which was we found before to be 70 kilonewtons. And because we took a section, there has to be a normal force in this thing, NAB. And now we're gonna do our second section. Looks something like this. And what are the forces on this one? Well, again, we have our reaction force which was 70 kilonewtons. We also have a 40 kilonewton force which acts over here. And because we took a section of this thing right here, there must be a normal force BC within it. So NBC. Next we're going to now solve for what these internal forces are because these things are in equilibrium, we can impose the same constraint as before the sum of the forces in the y have to be zero. And this is equal to 70 minus NAB, and this is equal to zero. So therefore the normal force in member AB must be 70 kilonewtons of force. If I take any section here, I will find that the normal force will be 70 kilonewtons. I'm gonna do the same thing for member for the second section and find that the sum of the forces in the y also have to be equal to zero. And that's equal to 70 minus 40 minus NBC. And we can find that NBC must equal 30 kilonewtons. Let's do a quick summary of what we've done so far. So the first thing we did was count how many forces we had, which was three forces. We always have to make one less cut than we have the amount of forces. So if we had three forces, we made two cuts. We made two cuts, making sure that each one thereafter included the new force. We drew free bodies for both of them, and we solved for the internal forces in each. So I'm gonna put these up onto the right spot of the page, just to save some room. So now we know the maximum stresses that must not be exceeded in each of the members. So we can start using that. The stress in AB is given by the normal force in AB divided by its cross-sectional area. Because these are cylindrical, as we're told in the problem statement, the cross-sectional area of AB is going to be just a circle. So 1 fourth pi dAB squared. 
And we know NAB, so I can put this all up into the top. And I know that this must be equal to 70. And I want to put everything into just its base units. So not kilonewtons, I want newtons. So multiply by 1,000. Divided by 1 fourth pi dAB squared. And what does this got to be equal to? Well, the normal force in AB must not exceed 175 megapascals. So 175 times 10 to the sixth power. And I'm going to solve this for dAB. So I'm going to bring this 1 fourth to the top. And I'm going to get 280 over pi times 175 times 10 to the sixth power. That's going to be equal to dAB squared. So take the square root of it. And when I evaluate this, this is also times 10 to the third, my apologies. When I evaluate this, I'm going to get 0 0.02256 meters. So this is the allowable diameter for member AB if this is what its um, average normal stress must not exceed. And I'm going to do the same exact thing for the next one. So stress in BC is equal to NBC divided by the area of BC. Because they are both cylindrical rods, the cross-sectional area of BC must be equal to 1 fourth pi times BC's diameter squared. And I know what BC is. It's 30 kilonewtons. So multiply by 1,000 uh, to get it to newtons. Divided by 1 fourth pi dBC squared, and this has got to equal 150 times 10 to the sixth pascals. And I solve for dBC, and multiply, uh, or I could actually just bring this to the top is what I usually do. So 120 times 10 to the third over pi times 150 times 10 to the sixth and I square root that whole thing. And give me a moment. This turns out to be 0 0.015957 meters. You can round that to as many as you want. I just keep this just in case I would use it in another step. But this would be the two answers. So DAB would be this value and this would be DBC.